that move.
Amen. Special time of year, and uh, we're just glad that you could all make it. And uh, just let's pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this special time of year, Lord, that uh, we can all come together and celebrate the birth of uh, your your Son, Lord, as He came to Earth, Lord, just to make a way for us for our salvation. <coughs> Father, and, uh, I'll just uh, be with everyone tonight and their singing and their performance. Father, just uh, lead, guide, and direct us as we go. Happy birthday, Jesus. Won't you stay with us tonight? We'll do a few songs together. And a special evening.
Amen. stories and it's the night before Christmas is a great story, but it's not the story. This is the story, the greatest story ever told. And I was looking at Matthew's version today and others and, and looking through the, the different gospel accounts, it's basically in Matthew and Luke. But I thought, you know, this is just the most awesome, wonderful, greatest story that could ever be told. And I was looking at a, at a, at a devotional today uh, that I got in my email. Mickey, did you see the devotion today? Yes, I did. From uh, Rick Warren, and he mentioned how you know everything in life is not so convenient, and uh, sometimes we can get inconvenienced. Anybody ever get like that? I know I'm I'm very patient. You know that, right? <laughs> but uh, you know we think we get life, and I think, boy, what about Mary? What about Joseph? You know, she's nine months pregnant. Alita just had a baby. Can you imagine being loaded up? James loading you up on a donkey. And leaving your house and, and you're going to Lexington with no I 75, it's about 90 miles on this journey. And then when you get there, there ain't no hotels. Then you gotta wind up in, in a cave or in a manger or somewhere like that. So it was uh, a, not the most convenient thing, but you know what? God is always perfect. And sometimes when we get the little inconveniences of life, it's God at work. And we need to kind of roll with it, okay? Because you know what the prophet said. That he would be born in the city of Bethlehem. Micah had said that. And that in the city of Bethlehem is known as the city of bread. And that's uh, Joseph came from the lineage of David. And Joseph is in there in Matthew when you read that account. And it's very important for the Jewish people. He was in the lineage because uh, he was prophesied that the, the Messiah would come. And that's the greatest story in the poem. And I'm going to read uh, a little bit about this. There's so much to it. And uh, where am I? Right <laughs> it came about for those in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So it's, it's humorous to me that even in those days there were taxes. I guess there's always been death in taxes. Isn't there? Sometimes we think the good old days, but they had taxes even back then, right? And they were all proceeding to register for the census, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Why would he go there? Because he was of the house and the family. Okay. This is important. In order to register, along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And you can look at Matthew at the whole account of Joseph and, and the grace of Joseph and the mercy of Joseph. And I'm sorry I said I wasn't going to talk for two minutes, but I'm going to go with just a minute or two. I told him I was just going to read, but I need to, I need to share this a little bit. Joseph was such a loving man. And he didn't act in haste. Remember when the angel came and talked to him? And with a pregnant wife, especially in those days. Uh, and they were living under that law and so on. But he was a faithful, faithful man, an awesome uh, man of God. And so was Mary was an awesome woman of God. But they went there because they were engaged and was with child. And it came about that while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And in the 
the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields. And they were keeping watch over their flock by night. And here we go. You guys remember, I mentioned this Sunday, the very first evangelist. Who was the first evangelist? Right here. An angel of the Lord. He suddenly stood before them. And here you go. Folks, get this. This was where the hair on your neck should stand up. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news. That's what we have, church. We've got the good news. We've got the gospel message, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring you the good news of a great joy. Not just a joy, not just something that's going to make you happy. I'm talking about a great, eternal joy. I bring you good news of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for, for you. For insert your name here. There has been born for Randy Sam. Says. <laughs> Curly? I like to call you Curly. I don't know if I have to do that because that was your dad's name. There has been born for Pearl a Savior. That's so sweet. There has been born for you a Savior. Not a teacher, not a king, not a prophet, not a healer, not a leader. He was all those things. But we didn't need those things. We needed the Savior. And that's who Jesus is. He's those things and he's the Savior. Who is Christ the Lord? Savior is one who saves. Christ literally means the anointed one. And the Lord is the title of God himself. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. i got to call attention to this again. Who is this heavenly host, folks? Who is this that's showing up? This is the big choir. I mean, this is the angels. Uh, you know, I, just imagine the whole sky lit up in Bethlehem, with all these people and the whole heavenly host singing, and the glory of God being manifested there in this time. This was a sleepy little tent, but it was an awesome event. And God is speaking like I spoke Sunday. God spoke at creation, and the light came out of the dark, and there was 400 years of slavery. Between the Old and New Testament, there was 400 years, and God spoke big in a little town of Bethlehem. And he brought the light of the world into, into this place for us, for our souls and our salvation. And it came about when the angels had gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds began saying to one another, I like these guys, by the way, because they were obedient. Let us go straight to Bethlehem and let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to me. They weren't like the religious leaders up the road that wouldn't saddle up their donkeys and drive five miles to see if Jesus was there. These guys were genuine. These guys were, were wanting to know, and they were seeking Jesus like those three wise men. Wise men still seek Jesus today, and wise women seek Jesus as well. And you know what? It says they came in haste. They didn't mess around, man. They just came. They went. They said, we're going. They came in haste, and they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen just as had been told. Praise the Lord. The 
greatest gift, the greatest story that was ever told, ever given. The Lord Jesus Christ. He came, man. He came. He came. Amen. Amen. We pray for this word. We'll go to the next point. So, Father God, thank you that you sent Jesus. It was all part of your plan. At just the right time, you tell us. In Galatians, that you sent forth your son. In Hebrews, you tell us that he was tempted in every way, yet was without sin. Because he knew that I, he knew I was coming along and I needed to save him. Thank you, Father, for your provision, your providential will, your care, your perfect will. Thank you, Jesus. Because you left. Your father's son. Never, ever had you been separated from the father. But you chose to do this to come to this earth. That we would have salvation through your name and only your name. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you moved, that you spoke, you orchestrated. People of, of God, and you orchestrated people that didn't know God, and you orchestrated everything in this whole situation. That we can now have the salvation in Christ and the greatest story of ever told. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for your living word, Lord God. And bless us as we continue to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
say a few things before I pray. You know, hopefully we never, ever, ever get so used to, so familiar with Christmas that we forget what a miracle that is. What an absolute miracle. And if you take it personally, how many of us would sacrifice our children, especially for disobedient people? He sacrificed his child for us. So, you know, I, I think about Christmas and I think about the presents and the tree and all that. It's awesome. Family, it's awesome. I'm not, not negating how wonderful that is. But let us never become too familiar with the fact that he sent Jesus for one purpose. And that one purpose was that cross. We cannot think about Christmas without thinking about Easter. Amen? Because Easter is what set us all free. Let us praise him now for that. Father, we thank you so much that you had to sacrifice your own little kid for us. Had to put a baby in a manger because we were such a mess. We were so sinful and so dark and you loved us and wouldn't leave us there. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for sending him. And to further the Lord, to let him grow up and show us how we should live. But then to ultimately sacrifice his life so that we can live with you. So someday we can all be with you because of Jesus. Thank you for the baby in the manger. Thank you for the man on the cross. And thank you for the intercession that he does for us now. Father, we love you. We thank you for Christmas. Oh, how we praise you. We thank you now in Jesus, Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas, everyone, and God bless. <clears throat> Merry Christmas to you all, and God bless. Bethesda Community Church, a place of hope, a place of love, a place of understanding, where you're welcome. We're glad you're here. Come back Sunday, 1045 for the church service. Bring the kids a little earlier and have a great time with the Lord.